Our News on Terror segment tonight. North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un used his New Year's Day address to issue a threat to the United States. Quote, the entire United States is within range of our nuclear weapons. A nuclear button is always on my desk. This is a reality, he says, not a threat. Take a look. The entire United States is within range of our nuclear weapons, and a nuclear button is always on my desk, he said. This is reality, not a threat. With me now, National Security Fellow from the R Street Institute, Megan Reese. Megan, good to see you. Thanks for having me today. All right, Megan, I want you to parse some of this uh, statement from Kim Jong-un here. He makes some claims within this threat. He says the entire mainland of the U.S. is within the range of our nuclear weapons. So let's start there. Is that, in fact, true? Has he developed his nuclear program so that any part of the United States, from San Diego to New York City, could be vulnerable to a missile attack from the North Koreans? Yes. So, so what Kim Jong-un is talking about is his advancement of their intercontinental ballistic missile program, which means that they are getting closer and closer to having a deliverable capability that can target the U.S. At this time, though, we don't believe that he has the ability to strike at will, which means they don't have the technological ability at this time to look at a specific city and get to that city with a ballistic missile. So even though t in some ways it's somewhat feasible for them to hit the U.S., they don't have the ability to target specific cities at this moment. Right, so when he says the mainland U.S., then he could be talking about anywhere because they don't have the capacity to actually target this. Is there a city, perhaps on the West Coast? I mean, that's what we've been hearing for the past couple of months, that maybe San Diego or Los Angeles, maybe even as north as San Francisco, that those cities could already be in range of their capacity. Is that realistic? Uh, yes, technically it is realistic at this time. So is Hawaii, even parts of Can um, Canada or Alaska. But I, I and the community does not believe that they have the ability to target specific cities at this time. So saying that San Diego needs to be on watch isn't really something we need to be talking about at this moment. That's relief to know since that's where, uh, since that's where this show films. Megan, let me ask you, moving on in his statement, he says, the nuclear button is always on the desk of my office. They, meaning the United States, should accurately be aware that this is not a threat but a reality. No matter how much America wants to attack us with their military might and nuclear power, they know that now we possess such great nuclear power and therefore they will not dare. Essentially, he's saying that their nuclear program or their nuclear capacity will be a deterrent for the United States to do anything to stop them. Do you consider that to be accurate? Will that be a factor in the decisions from the Trump administration? At the moment, the Trump administration has been clear that they are not willing to let the North Korean power have a deliverable nuclear capability. I don't think that's changed based on Kim Jong-un's deterrent statements. It, we still are committed to keeping nuclear weapons that can be delivered to the U.S. off of the Korean Peninsula. And that's not changing with the Trump administration at the moment. So I don't think that Trump or his national security team are going to be, quote unquote, deterred from Kim Jong-un's statements. Right. And if what you're saying is accurate, it sounds like it's partially an empty threat. It illustrates to us his intentions, but not perhaps his capacity. The United States, while this is all going on, the United States from the State Department, from Rex Tillerson primarily, has stated that they are willing and open, even inviting uh, the North Koreans, anybody from North Korea who's in the government to meet with U.S. officials at a time and place of their choosing, a topic of their choosing. What would, what would be the conversation in a meeting like that? Would they go directly to talking about the nuclear program or would they just start by saying, listen, let's calm everything down? I, I think that the primary objective at this very moment is to push us back from the brink of nuclear war. And it's a real possibility that's never existed or hasn't existed since the Korean War. The possibility that nuclear war could actually happen, much less happen on the Korean Peninsula. And I think that is Tillerson's <coughs> primary objective. I think that's America's primary objective, is to keep nuclear war from happening on the peninsula. And I would say that the U.S., citizens within the U.S. don't understand how close we are to open conflict on the peninsula right now.
Right. It, it, I mean, it's a scary thing to think about. If you had to rate a percentage, I mean, how close do you believe that we are? Are we one mistake away from a mushroom cloud over the Korean peninsula? Are we at a 50-50 chance? Where are we? Look, when North Korea tested a ballistic missile a couple weeks ago, a couple months ago now, they got remarkably close to shooting down a commercial jet by accident because they don't have that ability to decide exactly where their missiles go. I think if something like that happened, we'd be in a very precarious situation that could ignite an actual war. So we're far closer based on even something as simple as a mistake to having an open conflict on the peninsula. Right, and that, that, I mean, that's similar too. If something were to happen with Japan when they uh, test their missiles by flying them over Japan, God forbid it didn't land where they intended it to land. If it hit Japan, uh, then mm -hmm. I think we would see some of what Trump has been talking and threatening the past couple of months. Megan, thank you so much for coming on the show. It was great to talk to you. You have one minute to tweet me at Liz underscore Wheeler before we're back with Jan Ronis. 18 states across the country hiked minimum wage to start the new year. Liberals are celebrating this as a victory, but I don't know how you argue this is a good thing for workers who make minimum wage. So we're going to debate a Democrat next. See you in a moment.